Hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about clip-on night vision. Now, um, I get a lot of questions on clip-ons and, uh, and one of the reasons is because every once in a while people see me with one and, um, and I really do try to enjoy myself when it comes to clip-on night vision stuff because I've been playing uh, obviously in the night vision world for the long time and, uh, and then I just started in, in the last couple of years of playing around with long distance or, or longer range shooting uh, with scopes and stuff like that on my ARs and then bolt guns and stuff like that. Now I'm integrating both together uh, as, as I go, as usual, right? Always progressing, always trying to learn more. And one of the things that I've been doing is, is really trying to work my clip on night vision a little bit more, uh, mainly because I have one, right? It's mine. Uh, I spent the money on it. I might as well utilize it. And uh, it is just a one trick pony. It, it, it's great for magnified optics. That's pretty much where it goes. So when it comes to my scoped rifles, all, of, all three of them, uh, this one, my, uh, my two bolt guns, all of them have the night vision rail on the front or a rail that I can mount my clip on and all of them have a diving board so that I can mount a maul or any other laser device that I want on top uh, so that I can still use illumination. <clears throat> Excuse me. So going through it, what I found, uh, the setup that I enjoy using, um, I used to put uh, a full power peck on the side. Um, I used to mount my maul on the side uh, and, and try to route cordage or, or wires uh, so that I could activate it in a prone position as well as obviously in a, in a standing tripod position like this or any real other position that I can get myself into. So uh, what I found is that when I'm trying to get into those positions, the laser device was usually all the way up here or on the other side and it was hard to get to and if it was I couldn't change settings very easily. So changing settings was a pain in the butt even though I may have put it on and then got into position and I'm like damn looking through my scope and my clip on I'm like uh I can't see shit. So I needed it in a different setting or it may have gotten bumped or something like that. So I liked having I like having it up here now uh, on a diving board and I'll get some close-ups so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But up on the diving board, it helps me a lot with uh, giving giving my illumination somewhere it can go, and then not being um, uh, too far away from my fingers and stuff to activate them. Now, one thing I found uh, with using an illuminator up here, my cover, which I would normally keep up here on the shock cord that I keep it on, was getting in the way of my laser. So it was. It was reflecting a lot off of there and uh, would bother the hell out of me and I didn't like it. So I went ahead and I kind of changed it up a little bit also is kind of blocking some illumination that I needed downrange. So what I ended up doing and I'll get a close up of this but I added a little tiny uh, like S clip uh, carabiner to one side that way I can go ahead and clip it and then I can clip it right onto like my M lock or I think I got my M lock there yeah my M lock and, uh, and then that way it stores it folded back. Now this is for the PBS 27, right? Which is a little older, but the 30s I believe have a rubber cap. You could probably do the similar ob or similar thing with it, um, just up to you and how you have your stuff set up, but that gives me a clear line of sight for my laser. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you here. Going into it right this way, you could see where this cover would be up top blocking a lot of my laser. Here you can see my laser has a better path enough so that I can get a lot of illumination down there and work what I need to. So it, it definitely helps a bit uh, with, with the way that's set up uh, to, to doing that. And then what you'll also see is that my laser is set up on the, the left side or left handed conf configuration for the mall. What I wanted to do was, was be able to get in position, get stable, Right, and let's say I got stable, got into a good position, get stable, looking through my scope and realize, oh, I gotta do this. I can come up with my firing hand and work it. I could also change the settings. I could change the slider. I could do all the things I need to on that side and, and have access to it here. The other thing I didn't wanna do was block my red dot. So on this gun specifically, I have a red dot set up on the top right or high right uh, angle of my scope here. So I wanted to still be able to use it if I needed to passively. 
right? So I can still use it passively through my optics or my, my night vision, and it's not completely obscured by my laser or anything like that. My laser's not in the way of it. So uh, different things like that, guys. That, that's what I had to do for my setup specifically. Depending on what you're doing, depending on your setup, all that jazz, uh, you can choose however you want it. But for me personally, this was the way I wanted to use it and works out pretty good. So um, the other thing that I found is that my mount and my, my PVS-27 sit really, really flush almost. So there's a very little bit of light in there. So if I am getting ambient light in an urban setting, it doesn't cause any issues. I don't have to put a sock over it uh, where a lot of guys use different height mounts and stuff like that um, where you could cause a little bit of a discrepancy in where they're seeing each other um, which you can always uh, you know you could probably go ahead and guesstimate that there's gonna be quite a bit of parallax there uh, based off of that now something that a lot of people don't know when you put a clip-on on there clip-on device on on your uh, scope you're gonna have a dope change right so it's different from a suppressor shift but similar in the way that it shifts your round because you're seeing it through more lenses at that point so making sure that you check what your dope is and what your zero is because let's say um, like example mine is one mil low when I shoot with a clip on so one mil low what I do is I just dial up one mil and now I'm set so I could do all my holds like normal or I just know that whatever my dope is that I read, right? Let's say my, my dope for 150, I'm sorry, for 300 is like 1.5, which I think it is. 1.5 or 1.4, <laughs> I'll have to double check. But um, if it is, then it just goes up to 2.4, 2.5. So I, I know my dope based off of that, I can, I can adjust it based off of that one extra mil. Now, depending on what you get, some guys it may be 7, 0.7 or something, then guess what? <laughs> math is going to be your friend um or you can have a night vision dope card or something like that that you can help yourself with um a lot of guys just within 300 yards or so will just hold uh some will dial so you just need to know what you're doing what you're what you're working with so uh play with it see what you got um this is my preferred setup for uh laser and um and optic or, or night vision clip-on device uh, to give me a really good setup to, to work a lot of stuff with minimal laser buttons and, and cordage and wires and stuff like that. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. This is just my setup. Um, the, the mount that I'm using for my scope is a spur mount. That's why I can do this. It has a bunch of different little attachments that you can do. I really like that option. I think Geisley and Badger Ordnance also make different mounts that will do similar stuff. Um, but the spur mounts are my favorite, so I just keep using those. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense, guys, and uh, hopefully this helps. Take care.